Welcome back to part two. Uh, I've said already in this, this video has been a long time coming. It's it's been hard work this last week trying to do bits of this in between all, all my new, normal uh, studio stuff. Um, this part two is going to be making the ring shank and the little stiletto bit at the bottom of the collet and the full assembly uh, up to kind of like a, a pre-polish before stone setting if you were to stone set this. Um, if you haven't seen the first part of this video, I've released them both at the same time, so maybe pop over and, or pop back, have a look at that one first, because that will show you how I've got to this stage um, with lots more tips for all the other stages of that collet. Um, but really hope that helps. Please like and subscribe at the end if this content's been useful to you. Um, I hope it is. Um, but yeah, please comment also if, if you've got any questions or anything, anything that you've seen, um, anything you're curious about or anything you want to see. Um, yeah, we'll get straight on with the video. Thank you. Yeah, so straight away, um, that sort of, uh, the three quarters-ish of that little bar that was in the at the very beginning of part one that's this part that we're just milling down um, we're going to get down to a certain size then we're going to you see me step rolling it a little bit like what was in that how light video um, like that the white oval stone that I made into a, a pendant with like the little stepped part at the bottom that was um, step rolled in the mills. I think I said I said before in one of the other videos, but a lot of these smaller projects are going to be ways of doing sort of various techniques that will be like very much like a karate kid sort of Mr Miyagi, sort of doing the wax on wax off, doing lots of little bits, then putting it all together in certain projects. So. A lot of my smaller projects are, are actually aiming to do exactly that. So if you had success with something like that, you'll find this easy, and you'll understand the the actual flow of it. So so a, a little bit like the highlight video, I actually put the blue pen on the middle section of this because this is the part that I want as a so the solder join is going to be at the back of this ring, which is where it should be really um, for future sizings. But yeah, so the, where the blue is at the minute, this bit will end up being tapped flat. And I just want it nice, clean, clean metal because of like the shape that like when you see the preview a little while ago, um, it's got the the split shank where it gets gets tapped up cut with like the little T shape and then split um, but we'll, we'll go for all of that I normally like to get the, the ends of these down to anything between 2.2 and 2.5 it really depends how big the actual stone is and what metal um, like I said in part one and uh, uh, and welcome over if you've literally just finished watching part one and and you've tuned in for this one straight away. Um, like I said in that one, uh, it, this is silver, but mainly j just for the video. It's I wouldn't actually want to sell a diamond that's six odd, six mil, six point two mil in a bit of silver. It's um it's, it's just not worth it for the wear and tear. Like, for how quickly silver wears down, you know. Yeah, so you can see that nice little step roll bit there. So again, if you'd seen the Howlite video, of when I first done the step, step rolling on the video, you can probably already guess roughly what's, what's coming next. There you go, so that 3.2-ish. Being silver, we've kept it a little bit more. 
that top part, we will, uh, that three point two ish, we will actually hammer flat so that from the side the whole ring is uh, parallel uh, from the like, side facing. Certain ring designs you might want to, you could flatten it a bit more, but that will be in quite a few videos time, sort of dealing with something that goes to like, like pure knife edges, almost like the, the classic uh, Tiffany shank, with like the little chenilles in the side and things like that, which are definitely one of the higher levels. Yeah, so... All these little offcuts that you've seen me cutting off in these videos so far are literally all, they're all sitting together in one little place. Um, not too far away, I'm hoping. I'm just going to make a, a little knife. And the handle, I'm actually going to make, uh, I'm, at, I'm going to actually carve in wax and use the, the wet sand, like the uh, Delft clay kits. I'm actually going to cast the handle. So all these little off cuts are all, are all going towards that. And generally, when you've got a got a ring, whatever size it is, you generally want to make this about two and a half, uh, about two and a half, maybe three size. No, Maybe more like three sizes, too small for the actual length that you work out what you want to cut off. Because by the time you've done all your hammering and like you're tapping it up and tapping down, tapping back down the the uh, the shoulders, it's it's going to be closer to where you actually want the final ring shape. If you're not sure how to work out those dimensions or your, your maths isn't sort of super great um, you can always just measure it for your the, the ring size that you want and it will just be a case of just cutting a little bit out the back and, and closing that down um, before you've assembled all of it of course and again I will do a video at some stage or I might actually do it as part of um, the discord server which I'll be like releasing, putting like the invites out and stuff uh, sometime this month um, to try and get the like my own little sort of commun friendly community together, get people sharing some pictures of what they've done and j just various bits like that, and hopefully everyone can help each other. But yeah, so I'll, I'll be releasing that soon, and I don't know if I'll do a video of uh, basically like my sort of like data sheet of how I work out the measurements and from the thickness to, to just for, for everything from the collets to, to the ring shanks. There may be a lot more variations if you're doing um, oval stones and, and various bits like that. But yeah, I might end up just doing it on the, uh, the Discord. Yeah, so same as with the Howlite or any ring shank, even if you're just doing a, a completely parallel wedding band, you're just going to sort of gradually pull bits to and fro, just until you've, just until the ring edges are sort of in that happy place. And bear in mind, don't worry if you get too many dents and scratches on this because. You're going to be hammering this ring so much. Well, uh, uh, my wife see one of the other videos. I can't remember which one it was that that she watched. And then she just, I think it was that was saying oh, you're talking about um, hammering rings and and uh, needing smaller holes or something. And she said that there's a lot of that's what she said. Uh, moments in it as well, but that, that just goes with the jewelry trade. L lots of uh, double entendres in there. 
Oh yes, and this little tool as well. I kind of call these like the little sort of crocodiles. If you, um, I thought I'd sort of introduce them into a video because if you haven't got the actual uh, ring bender sort of tool that I've got, you can buy cheap ones on eBay for about I think like about that. I should about like forty pounds or something or whatever that is in dollars. I suppose that'd be like forty-five dollars ish or something. 900%. Uh, but the ones I've got are, are Durston ones, and I think they're about 180, uh, 180 pounds. But you can buy those little crocodile sort of, um, or like parrot jaws almost. Uh, I don't know what you call it. But like, um, but that's the other version of what you could do. J just a cheaper way of, of doing it if you haven't got too many tools. And again, for soldering, I'm just using like my fluorescent yellow. Or flux um, stuff that comes in the bottle and hard solder all of this video every single solder join that you see me do is all hard solder and that will be the same if I was using any of the carrots of gold as well I'll never go down to medium or easy hard has just got that bit more flexibility um, enamelin solder the extra hard one it's actually quite, or I find anyway, it's it's quite a brittle solder, and the medium solder is it's very just sticky, just doesn't want to run super nicely, and if you're using easy solder, if you're making big mistakes, you shouldn't should never need to go to easy solder. Or maybe the only time you'd use easy is if you are soldering those hollow sort of beads that are literally like electro formed yeah so uh, just quick jump back onto here the that's just literally uh, just with a rawhide mallet whether you use rawhide nylon copper mallet maybe but rawhides are always the better one just to get that main roundness back not that it needs to be super round because we're going to be hitting this a lot we're going to be hitting this hard So this is um, it's kind of like a medium weight uh, planishing hammer. And you see I'm literally just sort of knocking down where I want the shoulders to be. I'm not touching the top at all. So I want full thickness on that. I want, I want the full height. Um, even though some of it's going to get filed away, cut away, it's it's just like it's just having more toys in your toy box. You know, you've got a little bit more room to play with yes yeah, so you see even at this stage I've gone around the back as well because even the back of that ring for it to sit on the inside was it uh, 2.36 I think it was something like that um, that's too thick so that, this is where we're really starting to refine certain parts of it you know so you can, if you can remember back to the preview, you can already sort of, um, hopefully, kind of uh, envision what's going to be happening to this, like the way bits are going to be made thinner, and um, although you might not, uh, if you've never done one of these before, you might not be expecting me to make those little branch arms sort of split. Uh, the way you think it's going to happen. So that that might be a surprise to some people that have never seen that before. I've not really seen too many YouTube videos. I've I've I watched a couple just to see what a couple of other people were doing. But um, yeah, I, I quickly stopped watching and thought, yeah, I, I've just got to do my own thing. Um, put forward like my ideas and just, just hope what I want to do sort of meets up with what other people want to watch or well, like I said at the end of that last video uh, at the end of part one on nearly a thousand subscribers um, it's unbelievable I, I, I honestly thought that it would take like a year maybe or m maybe more than a year just to get to a thousand not for it to be taken seriously in about four weeks it's um, 
Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't quite got my head around that. Yeah, so th this is quite. Me I've drawn that one quite messy there. Um, normally, when I'm doing it for myself, not for a video, again, I would literally just do it by eye and just um, just tear the metal off where I want it with the file. Or like you see, a, actually like a little bit of hammer first. But like the later stages in a minute, I'd just be using a file straight on it as well and to just removing metal. And if you haven't used one of these steel bar triplets that much before, you've got to remember when you're hitting on it, because it is on, because the shaft is on the taper. Every time you're hitting it, it's making more in. It's making like a bigger impression on the side that's closer to you, because that's the bit that is touching inside the ring, the most. See so, you know, another that that's what she said. But um, yeah, yeah, me and my wife, or my wife and I are massive Office fans, English and the American one, especially the American one. But yeah, so you see, um, that's one bit that I didn't actually, or, or the video messed up on that bit, but I did actually anneal this, that's why it looks a bit white and frosty. So I'd annealed it before taking it off, spinning it round, so I can sort of get down that other side. It's all, it's all just about just trying to get that sort of elegant shape uh, still, you know. And the more you do this, the easier it becomes. All of this will just be second nature you know a lot of this you won't be measuring you'll just same as me that like I do actually have um, if I'm not recording I have a TV on in the background and you'll be the same even if you watch TV at the minute you'll be finding that you'll just be staring at the TV and just you'll just learn to like balance everything from like the sound as well you'll just hear when the hammer's closer to the steel bars and stuff it's it's weird how it all just just comes together. So you see, from those last hits from both sides, um, because the anvil is on the opposite side to it, it's going to do both sides at the same time. But you can see how it's just just refining those little edges where it's kind of splattered over the top a little bit. Yeah, but one of the next projects I'm actually doing is going to be a slightly wider version than this where I'm not actually going to split it I'm basically going to be doing like a, a knife edge up it um, so it's got like a spine down the centre and just doing like a little sort of dome cut out I'm just putting a dome in just for like a really simple little pearl ring so this is uh, probably my most used file just a, a cut zero um, straight on the sides because even though we've been on the anvil and like that last part I've tapped all around the the, the main top half there um, just because I've done that bit I haven't gone around the bottom so I'll always sort of jump back onto this and um, have to sort of flatten off the whole thing to literally just create a very smooth flat canvas for doing the marking for what you see me do and, it, and this is only roughly filing just to so I can sort of almost like sort of step back and sort of uh, see what gauge everything is you know just sort of like taking the whole picture and it's, it's the same as that's probably fine as well. This is like the same as a anything I make. Um, even though I've done ring shanks like this, like I, I don't know how many hundreds, thousands, I don't know how many I've made like this. But literally every job I work on, or that I've got sitting in the pile, I think at the moment I've got about maybe 20 more things on the go at the moment uh, in the actual studio but I'll have a plan ahead of this so that like, for if something goes wrong just need need like a um, 
Well, almost like that, like a get out of jail free card, you know. So just, uh, it's just having a plan together for in case something goes wrong. We think, oh, I'll turn this into this and get out of it. Um, so it's uh, uh, one of you recently. Um, you know who you are. The um, literally all of this is like a, a game of chess. Like uh, the whole time I'm making this, I've got each stage like sort of mapped out in my head of different stages that could go wrong. So it's literally like like a brainstorm of like a tree, tree branches of all of all these like little sort of contingency plans um, for when things go wrong. And at one time in my head, I've literally got that same sort of chess game of moves for every job that I've got in the safe that's uh, waiting to be worked on or part way worked on. It's literally always, that's why it's always good to like, when you've stopped doing this in the evening or any type of job, you just switch off. Uh, learn to switch off. I haven't got the answer how to switch off. I'm sure there's a some sort of mental health um, YouTube channel that can help you switch off from work or stuff because it's really important because it will just drive you crazy if you think about this stuff too much. But yeah, but it's always good to, especially if you're beginning, just do one or two jobs at a time. Don't don't balance loads of stuff. So it will drive you bonkers. You'll be pulling your hair out. That's what happened to me. That's why I'm already bald. Yeah, so it's a, um, I'll just take this out. Uh, this is out of 400 grit paper. And a lot, uh, there's so many time wasting things as well that a lot of people do. Because um, they don't realise how quick things actually take. Like if, if you're learning from someone at um, college or like university doing this, um, like I said, I was using a, a cut zero uh, file, hand file, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, use that cut zero, then go over the whole thing again in a cut two, then maybe for some more precious metal, go on a cut four. I'll file all of it with the cut zero. Then after I've done the cut zero, straight into the 400 grit paper." And I'm the same if I'm working on platinum as well. If if you just got that nice connection, nice movements, um, a technique that you've practiced hundreds of times, and it just all becomes natural, basically. Like you can see how smooth this is, and that really was just cut zero file straight to a 400 grit paper. And this is a cut to saw blade again. You can see I'm going down, I'm leaving about 1.4-ish. doesn't have to be super exact. 1.4mm-ish um, sort of a cut. So like from this point where I'm literally going into now, it's kind of the bottom of a capital T, is the best way to describe this cut. And you see like, so I can get a like, kind of straightish line as possible, I will sort of angle it and go upright. Um, I will generally do a, a lot of that. I should have shown these verniers actually, but yeah, th this was about 1.4 ish sort of cut there. Now, normally when I cut these uh, for the part that I'm about to cut, oh, it's a note as well. This this for the first cut going around the corner, I've actually gone down to a. I think it's a, a four row saw blade, just to make it easier getting that first bit in and around. And the same with any sawing, I'm kind of leaning backwards and sort of pivoting at the same time before then sort of going forwards. But you might find this easy if you do drop a saw blade a little bit. So yeah, and uh, with the dividers, you see that I'd set like from the center, I actually sent like set my end points for where I want the bottom of the split. Like normally, I would cut these absolutely perfect. Um, I wouldn't even necessarily need like my microscope. I'd just be cutting around and doing it. I sort of do it a little bit from this way, a little bit the other, 
then flip it over. You know, as I said, I normally do it perfectly. But like for me, this is just one of those things where it's really like there's certain movements for me that are really hard because I've got where I'm at the bench and I've got the camera set up to the side looking down or sometimes from the right looking down it's just really in the way and I can't get everything perfect so it almost puts me back into that like a beginner mode for the certain things that I do so as an example I think it's so I was trying to time that perfectly for when I flipped it over I couldn't think how long I was cutting for but yeah you know but you know it's when I do flip it over there's one bit that's kind of dipped in and it looks really ugly but um, the more practice you do and I say what I normally do it's a perfect line it's a perfect curve but like I said before in the other video there, there's certain things I'm going to do on here or oh, like when it comes to snapping saw blades and things I, I'm, I'm leaving it in because um, it shows what that some of the shit bits you know it can show how unforgiving some of these sort of um, things are. And I thought I might as well go through the same pain, you know. Like even on this bit, cutting around this curve. So we do it at about 1.4, just in case we do drift a little bit. And this one, I did actually start drifting towards the inner ring a little bit too much, or m more than I'd like to anyway. I'd, I'd, I said that normally I'd like to just get on there and just go straight in, <coughs> straight in and cut the thing, sort of uh, without any problems. See, it's, as I'm cutting this bit now, it's what it's doing to the other side that has kind of gone inwards, which you'll notice when I flip it. But I say, I said I was going to leave it in. And from, especially when you're first starting out doing these, for what you'll see the other side of this looks like in a minute, this is the reason why you wouldn't go all the way around in one go, just from one side. And it makes it so much easier for cutting. Yeah, so you can see the, the other side of this has really drifted inwards. Like for me, it's just because the camera's in the way and it's just doing my head in. I kind of need like an invisible camera or like a little miniature thing really that you don't know that's there. But as you can see I've kind of used the uh, as much of the saw blade as I can but really just trying to just, just do like a, a nice uh, sort of gliding along and I've kind of lent it to the left a little bit still aiming right to go on the curve but I've lent it left a bit and that's kind of brought that the top part of that split anyway kind of back into line you'll find that this is like the, the trickiest most annoying bit out of all of it well, I, I think so anyway but after a couple of these you'll um, you, you, you'll just get the hang of it No, but I will do a shank at some stage, but probably when I'm, I'm doing a platinum one. Some people actually make uh, a normal band, that, that, that parallel, no tapping up. But afterwards, they'll, they'll cut a, a little step in, almost like a keystone shape. Cut a top sliver out, then cut that down the middle. Then that curve, they flip open. And literally put that either side, so then they'll solder those parts on. I'll do I'll do one at some stage, just to show you a variation. It's it's not my it's not my favourite way because I, I like things that have got as few soldering joints as possible. Uh, sort of more welds, less solder. another reason as well like things have 
gone a little bit skew. Though I've already mentioned a couple of times now, it's getting a bit boring. But where I've knackered my index finger on my left hand and I'm trying to keep it out of view, a lot of the things that I'm doing like this is actually my thumb and my middle finger. So it's kind of trying to teach myself a new technique and um, so no one has to look at my so no one has to look at my gammy finger. I'm doing it for you. And the reason these uh, and the way these can go wrong um, so quickly, like really quick, two or three strokes, it could just go in too far, and 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 yes, yeah, it's, it's game over. But that's why it's definitely worth practicing these in silver. But even this one I've made in silver. Um, obviously, silver tarnishes if it's not used much. But I've, with a silver polishing cloth, I can keep it quite nice. But I'll actually put that in my display tray, so I can show clients and sort of uh, different things that I can do. Especially when it's something a little, especially different like that. There you go. So you see how I've kind of, from like the bit that's on the right on this side that has started to drift in a little bit how I've kind of rectified that just from a bit of clever leaning and that you know right so this bit in a minute you'll see me at the very top of that capital T I'll cut those little corners off so I can get round those pliers in basically and bend it up which you can do um, you can do that straight away but like the almost like these bits that almost look like fists, they will just lift up and stay very straight. Whereas by me doing this, and if you feel more comfortable, you can just file all these bits off rather than sort them. But by taking this little sliver out, it's kind of weakening that bit for that for the next bend that we're gonna do. And the only reason I've being that this is silver and it's not that expensive at all, I would have been tempted really just to use my cut zero file again and just a few strokes and just killed it. But I thought I'd leave this in so I can explain why I normally cut this. Because um, most of these that I make will be in platinum and little off cuts like this in platinum are basically what I'll, I'd put in the. Uh, the uh, rolling mills and I'd mill them down just that little bit thinner and reuse these as welding sheet because I don't reuse platinum dust that just goes in the lemon pot that goes off to the sort of smelters once a year uh, like the good stuff but yeah it's that little bit there I wouldn't have just let it fall in skin I would have got that and that would literally be what I'd use to weld the next bit of platinum up or even if you've got loads of those, it's a lot easier for remelting all together to literally just form your own new platinum bar. That will, that's uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's just a nice way of reusing this little bit and not have it as all all complete dust. Be interesting if people um, if you could uh, comment down below, just sort of say like roughly like what level you're at, or if you've been doing it for quite a while, and like me sort of doing this, like saying oh that this is about a level four, or like a high end level four, almost at a five. Um, yeah, it'll just be interesting to see if. you've been able to do this okay and where you sort of consider yourself or um, I don't know really just as, just see if that is like a, what you'd maybe think as a level four if that made any if that made any sense at all uh, what time? it's getting quite late here it's getting quite late I'm tired I've just really wanted to get these 
two videos out. Um, it's been 11 days since I put any on, and as I said in the uh, part one, it's been so hard finding time to to do all of these. It's, it's, yeah, I've struggled a bit for these. Yeah, so this is the first little bit, just taking off the corner. You see, I do go in again and make it a little bit wider for my uh, smallest round nose pliers. But you, you'll see how I, how I lift these. And an extra little thing as well. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this twice is because that hole that I had just cut, my my really fine uh, snipe nose, round nose pliers, or like chain nose, some people call them, that I use for doing that, are actually kind of dead now, and I forgot. So I've had to open these up a little bit for my next size up. So that, that's why I'm doing this twice. It, you can just do this once if if you know roughly what what size your ones are. Really, there's no reason to do it twice unless you've uh, made a bit of a cock up. So there's a lot of, um, which I haven't said on the videos before, I'm pretty sure, but a lot of the, like I did go to college, I actually went to a place that was called Kent Institute of Art and Design, which is based in Rochester, Kent, in uh, South East England, and, okay, yeah, so you can see roughly how that is there. But a lot of that course uh, for doing the um, my degree, a lot of it was like design based and literally when I first went up, started working up in Hatton Garden up in London, um, I literally had to relearn how to solder things because like, some of the things that I was I, I was actually taught was quite a waste of time um, in many aspects of it. And we certainly didn't learn to do fine jewellery there. A lot of my fine jewellery side of what I've learned is from days when I do quite a few repairs. As you can see, I'm just kind of leveling leveling these up so they're roughly even. So we'll be jumping in with uh, files um, for the next part. You can see roughly where I want to be on this. But yeah, but. Um, the early days of when I'd done repairs, uh, working at different places, luckily at that stage I did have some okay bosses, because um, I did ruin quite a few expensive things. But basically you you mess something up, like a tiny little component of an antique ring from like the 1920s or earlier, and like the boss would come up to me and say, like you've uh, like proper done a number on that basically <laughs> basically you've messed that up you've got to remake that little component to match and you've got to make it perfect so that you can put it back in um, solder it or weld it whatever you're going to do so that you can then carry on with the job so that no one's ever known that you've made a mistake I say it's, it's been decades since I've made a mistake like that so yeah, to jump back onto here, these files are both a cut to barrette file or safety back. But you know, it's one that's been on the grinder and just streamlined that back and made it shiny. And we're just going to go in and gradually uh, just smooth off all those like saw frame marks. But yeah, um, yeah, that, that's basically how I did it. So certain aspects of jewellery training if you know a lot of the basics and let's say I was forced to have to make certain components absolutely perfect or um, I probably would have been fired um, a few times in like the early 
two thousands, and that yeah, yeah, oh, I probably would have been fired a few times. But yeah, but that's, that that really is how I learned to make like the the real fine jewellery. I said that this is kind of fine. It, I'd call this fine if it was in platinum and things were a little bit more streamlined. Like um, certain bits inside these, if it was platinum and gold, I'd actually be pre-polishing all of these as well. Um, you'd be, you're more than welcome to do that on your your versions if you're going to do a, a silver practice one. But really, everything just just needs to be nice, you know. It needs to look needs to look good. So yeah, so I suppose that this would be fine jewellery, especially with some of these techniques. But um, at some stage I will get to what I call really fine jewellery. I'm not talking about really super thin skinny rings or anything as in fine, just as in just really like sort of beautiful crisp lines, um, just everything really accurate. That's why I've called this a level four because there's certain bits I haven't done on this, which I would do for the higher level tutorials sort of later on. But yeah, this uh, this cut two Brett file, where it's got that where it's really streamly, it's thinner than a bit of card um, at that finest point, but that can really get into some of these like tight little spaces. Is it so yeah, so you can see from here it's, it's quite neat already, but there's there's certain angles and there's certain bits of the curves that aren't super neat. There'll be certain bits on this where you, you see I'll I might point. I think one of the bits there I do actually point out with like a a pen or a file or something, and say that. I've, I've got to get a shot of this and basically have to just do a little bit of buffing. Because um, as you're doing some of these bits, yeah, sometimes you can put more scratches on uh, in certain ways. So that, there'll be lots of things that sort of pop up. You think, oh shit, I've, you think, yeah, I've, I've got to get rid of that now. I've got to, oh, I've just got to rectify different bits as you go. But say, like, for something like this being silver, just steaming through this just sort of getting the job done whereas if on this I was working on platinum even before I put them in these wooden hand clamps uh, the, basically like the, the lever on these are long gone I, I'll just keep putting new lever in on these sort of clamps but if I'm putting platinum in now I'll actually dust off inside the platinum I'll try and keep people say like that if, if you want to polish platinum and get nice and smooth try not to scratch it in the first place and it really is as simple as that just treating it carefully just treating it nicely you know and the same as uh, the collet video when I was in uh, in those like little slice groove bits you can see like my thumb when I'm sort of doing certain areas especially if it's sort of going up something then curving up I guide a lot of things with my thumb whether it's sort of filing towards me or filing away quite often I'm using my thumb just to sort of guide areas you can see this I'm using my peg it's guiding the area on the back it's more when it's the part that's closer to me that I'm using my thumb as almost like a bench peg or a moving bench peg. So, where this whole ring's probably about 2.2 mil wide at the moment. Um, I think I said before, at some stage I'll do like a little knife edge one so you can see it, so it really take like from the side isn't parallel, it will really taper in. Like a like to like a fine point, but um, yeah, just like a little bit of imagination. You can imagine if if this was a, a finer metal with a diamond in top, these little parallel lines. You could put maybe 
10 or 15, like 1.2 millimeter diamonds, all down that shank, sort of dotted. Uh, nice bit of grain setting. All those little mill grain wheels, you can, you can maybe sort of uh, box it off with that. And the thickness that I've left these top bits, you could even drill the stones in to the right size with a little needle file or the little t even like point eight little um, flame burr. They should do like the little side windows in the grain set that you see. So it's it's, it's completely up to your imagination. You can, like for me, I can see loads of different projects in this um, as soon as I look at anything like this. Yeah, so these are little bits I'm pointing at here. Instead of it going to like a nice streamlined point, it's it's just got like a little wobble to it. Sometimes you might need to get a needle file into it. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. But yeah, you can um, you can see here like because I'm actually holding the piece in the studio, I could see that that only needed a little bit of paper, and it's just brought it back down. Yeah. And again, this is only prepping it, ready for the main, uh, ready for the main event really, of having all your sort of Lego pieces together, all the bags open, all in front of you, and then sort of time to assemble it all, you know. And the more you do these things as well, that. So yeah, it sounds a bit boring, the amount, amount of times I say it, like, the more you do all this, the easier it all becomes. But but it is the practice makes perfect. And um, certain snows, especially if you're, um, if you're a hobbyist and you've got a full-time job probably doing something completely different to jewellery. Um, there's certain things like this it might take you a while on the bench doing, but and I know it can be frustrating. Like you might think, oh, I've got to go work to a job that I'm not really that keen on, maybe, or you might be keen on it, but think, be thinking, uh, I really want to go home and do a bit more practice and stuff. But everyone's different. Some people are luckier with the amount of time that you've got to practice and. But the biggest thing is just the patience. You don't, you don't need, you don't need to rush. Yeah. So luckily, um, this is almost gone in first time. Um, kind of marking it out. Sometimes you do have to tinker around quite a bit with the upper sides a lot. Um, but this happened to just go quite well. I was lucky on this one, to be honest. Yeah, if all goes well. What's it today? Uh, Wednesday the 20th. Look, it's getting late. Yeah, but by the time I've gone home, uh, had something to eat, I'll, I'll try and put these two recordings over, like the commentary bit, over the videos, and I'll, I'll try and sched schedule them for tonight. Um, probably depends how long it takes to render. Um, but I imagine anyone in the UK will probably be more tomorrow that they'll see it. Uh, It'll be more like six or seven hours from now. I'll try and schedule it, so it might be before some of you Americans go to bed or, or wherever you are in the world. Oh yeah, so when I'd actually done this bit, this is for the under bezel. Um, this was basically a bit of four mil round wire. The video footage for this bit didn't work. Uh, I don't know why it didn't record properly um, but yeah that that's that is only 
a bit of four mil round wire pushed into the same uh, bezel uh, collet plate. So you didn't miss out too much there. And then I've just cleaned it up and filed that little bevel edge on there. And to get this to balance, you notice I, um, I had a clean bit of the tungsten solder probe with the flux on just while well, I heated it up a little bit and that just kept it uh, secure. And again, that these this sort of soldering is really awkward in silver. Um, it's it's quite e it's quite easy to overheat a, a lot of things this fine in silver. It's it's not a normal thing to do, to be honest. So yeah, and, and it's flicking about all over the place. But you can see, I've got some really nice, neat solder joins on this bit. There was one, I think it might have been the last one. Or it might have been that spot just there, on the other side, actually overheated a little bit. Um, yeah, see how it's looking at, it looked a little bit, looks slightly patchy. But at this stage, luckily I didn't melt right into it. So, again, if this was like a bit of 18 karat yellow or 18 karat white and platinum, they wouldn't have even wouldn't have even come close to that happening. Yeah, there you go. So this is an escapement file cut to basically put in some kind of like a, a little waistline on it. Um, you see why I do these? So some people will use. See, I, I like the collets to go sort of down, or almost bowl-like, and then go to like, a, like the little stiletto sort of heel at the bottom. I like it to sort of come down, and then sort of uh, do a little sort of curvy flick at the bottom. Uh, only fractional for that little bottom section, but um, you'll see why I do that in a minute. Um, because it's the one thing, no matter what metal you're using, will literally save. It'll mean that you don't need a, a pulse welder to tack things together to hold it in place. Um, just the way it sits in the collet. But you, you, you'll see when this bit's done and prepped and stuff. You know, you get to see it. Because it, yeah, like I say, I like mine to sort of go down, then flick out at the bottom a little bit. Some people, when they've, that I've sort of worked with before, for the very initial collet, they'd actually use a bit of sheet that's slightly taller, so that when they pushed it down and made their little flower pot, they'll cut the bottom sliver off, and they'll turn that into the bottom part of the collet, and they'll just use that, so it's already there. I say, I, I like mine to be a, a little bit more elegant, not as bulky or I find when people use the ones that are like the same size or almost in line I think it doesn't look as elegant and I think especially if you've made it for something that's quite crisp it can almost look um, a little bit CAD cam like someone's done it on a bit of Rhino software or Blender or whatever anyone's using at the minute yeah, so this part here is the most important part of of any of it. Oh, uh, this is just a little pre-polish. I only did this little bit. I say if this was platinum, I'd be going in there um, with a buff stick that's cut down even more than this one, uh, just so I can get right in and on the up sort of like the slopes coming up as well. Uh, I'd be doing. Uh, just to get a really nice finish in there and pre-polished and all that and probably if it was those metals I'd be thread polishing it at the end as well we would get like the cotton strands up sort of twiddled together and that and a bit of polished but no it's um, when it comes to the, the cutting bit now um, it's these following few little steps that are the most important because um, the same as like when I say cutting that capital T shape, saying that's probably the, the trickiest, most awkward bit. 
actually it's not, it's, I'm forgetting this bit. Yeah, so really, I've cut this so that it's kind of a little bit under. Um, this is only going to be flat sides because it's a straight saw blade. Um, basically, I'm just going to be getting that in, and, and then you'll see what I'll I'll be doing. Actually, in a second here, I'm sure it was on this bit. Or actually, pulls because like the I don't know, it was just getting a little bit clingy, and I actually um, do put a, a little bit of beeswax on. I think it's. Uh, sorry, right. just make myself look a liar. I'm sure. I'm sure sorry, I'm sure there was one part in this video where I actually used a bit of beeswax, and saying like, I don't really normally use it. But yeah, so again, a cut to a half round escapement file, and just really carefully trying to get down that centre as much as possible. Um, and you're going to see why. That this helps in a, in a second. It's it's quite an important part. On this part, it's quite believed that it that the actual uh, footage actually uh, was quite sharp, and I could zoom in quite a bit just to show it. So it might look like I was sort of going at warp speed then, but there, there really is no no rush to do this bit. Take your time because if if you can imagine the collet's about to go in the, the actual centre of this, if you've over filed one side when it comes to putting it all in, you could end up having a half mil gap between the top of the shank and the collet and it, it's not even. Whereas if something like that happens you end up having to file a bit more on the other side, and then a little bit more out the bottom of both sides, then literally closing the ring up, making it slightly smaller so it so the top parts meet the collet again. But that's um that's just a way of getting yourself out of trouble if anything like that happens. Yeah, so you see both these uh, bottom branches now have got that slight inner curve. So then on the bottom of this stiletto part this is only um, a 2000 grit uh, half round buff stick like a pre, pre bought one just to put a bit more definition on that outer curve of that you see I'm just giving the little curves a once over see if if we did that bottom stiletto bit was just another tapered little flower pot piece, when it comes to turning it upside down, getting a sort of balancing it on your soldering block um, to solder, obviously, it, you could spend ages just making sure it's like on sitting in the right place or from the side that it's upright, not leaning and because there's nothing worse than like soldering something and like looking and like the collet's like just completely pissed. It just looks like it's been down the pub all afternoon. But this way, we just created that extra curve, out curve here, then the extra inner curve, so that when we place it in, it basically sits where it's supposed to. Okay, so you see, yeah, it's obviously I won't just solder this, um, that's a bit I left there, actually. I did go and sonic it, get all the polish off. But you see, as this is now, it's just holding in place like that. I'm giving that quite a flick, and it's just not coming out, it's just stayed aligned uh, the whole way, you know. It just made it just keeps everything nicer, everything that little bit more crisp. And when it comes to soldering in a second, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just lucky 
you know. Well, not lucky. It's because you've been practicing and you've learned to do it like that to save yourself all the time right now. So save you 40 minutes of balancing it. But yeah, so normally on this, uh, I was quite lucky, uh, and this isn't about loads of practice and being good at w what I'm doing and stuff. There was actually absolute fluke on this bit, but I soldered this bit again, solder one side, flame the other. But you notice, right this second, as I was picking up that second bit of solder, a bit of the old solder rerun, and it's actually soldered the um, the tops of the collet together. See, at this point, I think it must have been a bit of from when I put the under bezel part on, it had, um, one of them bits of solder must have gone down one of the seams. So actually, for the, it almost looks like I've missed that bit out, soldering the top parts on. But by me picking up that second bit of solder, it just, it was a bit close, the whole ring was a bit close to the heat and it just re-rent that solder. So we'll do a proper soldering video at some stage of why I use hard for everything. But yeah, so now it's, it's a case of just the clean up. But yeah, I was I wasn't sure what to do when that um, first happened. I kind of felt like maybe I should cut it back open so I can close it up again, so I can so you can see it soldering. But I thought now if I leave in my accidents and things that go wrong, I thought I might as well leave in weird random flukes that can happen, you know. Yeah, so that clean up can be quite tedious and boring. Probably probably find it it's this sort of part that I, I personally personally like the least, along with polishing. Like for me it's the thing that got me into all of it in the first place it's more like the the engineering side of things um like the craft like the the uh yeah more the engineering I obviously love the metal work and used to love lego as a kid and i've always seen it like that as though you're making all little separate components that all sort of clip in together and and that sort of thing, that's like the appealing part. And with this, that there's not much to sort of say on this. This is, um, I see when I have like the uh, pre bought buff sticks, when they go, when they wear down, I do use them for like homemade buff sticks. You can see how crisp the corners are on these buff sticks. That's basically because I have the sheet, lay my buff stick down use like an old scorper or anything that's like a sharp edge and just gently score it, fold it up, score and basically uh, put it all, just fold it all up and then elastic band around the end. But I do like quite often having like a nice, a nice sharp edge buff stick and that's what you need for things like this, especially with these such flat surfaces. Like I said it's, it's getting quite late. If I've, um, if at any point I've started to talk about something, and I've uh, sort of got sidetracked or sidetracked or sort of drifted off onto something else because something else is happening that I've wanted to mention that's been quite important, um, feel free to ask a comment in the bottom if there's something that you've missed or something that I might have been speaking about and forgot to finish. Yeah, so here is back to my little homemade like mini round buff stick. But it's definitely worth um, trying to get some double sided sticky tape, like as, as wide as you can. Like if this wasn't as wide, because it's quite uh, the paper that I use for that is quite thick. So if I had any sort of only like a sort of one inch, sort of twenty five mil 
bit of double sided sticky tape and fold up basically the the paper would have just pulled itself apart so if you can get like good five centimeter two inch sort of stuff yeah so at this point notice that I did buff all the sides a little bit sort of pre uh, papered it a little bit and then this is basically just cutting that little extra under bezel off um, just get shot of it it's obviously not needed anymore and that really was we normally leave those a little bit longer so that if depending on what you're doing with your stone how big your stone is how high up you want it sitting in your ring shank so um, I mean, this is where I actually got a bit of piece wax I hardly ever use that stuff yeah um, but yeah but by having that, that little bit longer to start with it does give you that option to make it sit up a little bit higher and just have a little play really Now this stage I'm kind of just hoping I've got enough battery left in the camera. I think, look, I think we're good. Yeah, so this is one of those um, split shank mandrels that you buy. And this is a bit of that sort of material backs um, emery. Yeah, it's on that really thick cloth, and this is a 180 grit that I use. That this is like my the equivalent of like um, the old-fashioned like bastard file that people use, which I, I rarely use anything that rough. But yeah, that this is what I use that for getting like the the fat off the meat, you know. But then I go to like the uh, the pre-made ones. So certain rings, um, some engagement rings, most of the wedding rings, if I'm putting that inner curve on, I want it a bit more comfortable. So I will go in with like a ring file, like the, the slim half rounds, and really sort of like file in nice and evenly, sort of turn in and, and um, just getting it nice and smart, all, all just nice and even. But when it's something like this, I will, just use these little spinning wheels and just do like a little light skim. Just put on that, just an, a nice little chamfer, you know. Also helps that if you make, if you've taken an order for a ring, and like me, I'm normally give like a lead time of like six to eight weeks, um, cause I'm normally quite busy. But sometimes by the time someone comes to collect a ring, it needs to be a different size. Uh, for whatever reason, it might just be uh, because of the seasons. It might be coming out of autumn, getting into summer, and people's hands are starting to fill up bigger sizes, you know. So it's nice not taking too much off the inside because quite often I do have to resize straight away. But it's just a normal thing. So back to a good pre-polish here. I would normally pre-polish the inside of this as well and give it a little buff. But I knew that when it comes to trying to get the final video that you'd seen at the beginning that will come on at the very end of this, I knew that if I polished the inside, I wouldn't get that contrast for the filming. But that's something that I haven't done on this. But you should do. I just knew it would be an absolute bitch to get the footage. See, uh, like I said before, when I do a video on basic things of like me sawing, sort of like when I use twist drills for drilling, that I don't drill into metal as I'm pressing down, as I'm accelerating in and or pushing, uh, I sort of rev it fast and sort of go in 
so I cut when it's slowing down. And same with like these sort of felts. It's like my little techniques. Like this felt, you, you can't buy um, not the way I want it. So actually buy uh, the flat-sided ones, and the good ones are these. I can't even buy in England. So all these ones have got like a little capital peel on the end. So I don't know who the manufacturer is, um, what factory they've come from, what country. But I actually buy these in uh, from Hafner in Germany. I just normally buy, just get 100 in at a time or something. So I don't have to get that sent over from Germany all the time. It's, it can be a bit of a wait sometimes. But when you've... Um, yeah, I know a bit, little bit of this footage was a little bit blurry, but for the way I was, I, I couldn't not put it in, if you know what I mean, because it's quite important for like the angle that I was going up. But yeah, we, um, yeah, like I say, like in the video, I'll be showing how I trim these felts to the shapes that I want, and how even when they're worn down quite a bit, I turn them into other things. Um, I feel like sort of trickier looking little shapes. I'm saying that actually, that this is one that I had. You can buy a knife edge, um, but you find they're really hard. They're, they're, it's such a hard felt. So, this one, I'm kind of dressing the edge for how I want this one. Because this isn't super hard like the normal knife edges. Like the, the knife edge doesn't stay on there as long. But this is only silver, and I've only needed to do it twice. But if I was doing loads of these, if this was platinum, I'd be redressing all, all the time. And you see also where I've trimmed it down to a narrower thickness. When I was on that top curve there, or even now on the back, it kind of takes the shape. So even though I've done this as like slightly rounded on the very edge, as that's spinning, it's like spinning around like in a normal circle, but it's kind of dipping over that bit and going back to its normal circle and still keeping a nice shape. Um, I'll do videos where I go over stuff like that because it's a shape that the manufacturers really should sell. And uh, only one other place that I've worked at before in getting on for 28 years of doing all this I've actually seen someone that actually trims the uh, the felts as well themselves I might be wrong, that's literally just the only people that I've worked with no one ever does it and they certainly don't sell uh, the shapes that I like but yeah, so that this has been a, a long time coming this video it's, it's been hard work putting together um, thanks again for nearly a thousand subscriptions at the time of actually recording this. I hope this has been helpful. There'll be more variations of this. Um, there's not much more I can say. There's going to be loads of everything. Um, there'll be a couple more videos and there's going to be a video of something to do with a Barbie doll as well. Which is a bit weird. But something a bit more fun, you know. But yeah, um, I'm going to literally leave it there. Thanks again. If you haven't subscribed already and rung, uh, rung the little bell, uh, please do so. It, it's really like puts me in the mood for just doing as many videos as I can, um, knowing how much they've been watched. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, yeah, yeah, much love to everybody that's sort of uh, been involved and watching and commented everyone that's commented already so far thank you yeah i'm just going to leave it there um yeah i'll see you on the next video yeah thank you